And I would like to start off with our first panel member, uh, Dr Katie DeJoya. And as Monica said, something like, oh, to need glasses. <laughs> I need my glasses for this one. Um, Katie is a senior lecturer at the Institute of Early Childhood at Macquarie University. She lectures in professional experience a post across postgraduate and undergraduate units that encompass both the prior to school and school sectors. In 2012, Katie was awarded a Macquarie University Faculty and Vice-Chancellor's Award for leading a project team in supporting international students during professional experience placement in school environments. Katie's research work is underpinned by the importance of partnerships and relationships. Her areas of interest include supporting sorry, supporting transition into ed educational settings for children and families from immigrant and refugee backgrounds and practitioner inquiry. Teachers practices as key in outcomes for children and families in the early years. And something you may not know about Katie, although you will now, is that she's a huge fan of football, the round ball game, the beautiful game. And she, <laughs> and she supports Sydney FC, Sydney Football Club. Thank you and welcome, Katie. I wonder, I wonder what assessment you have made of me subconsciously in the first few moments I've stood to talk to you. She's discussing culturally and linguistically diverse issues. Is that her surname? Did she marry into it? I wonder where it originated from. Is she Italian? If she is, she doesn't look it. We all do it in different ways. Subconsciously, however, this may guide our thoughts and our responses to situations and the impact that has on developing relationships, be those with colleagues, children, families, from, families, um, from culturally and linguistically diverse backgrounds. As an aside, I am the granddaughter of Italian immigrants who came to Australia to make a better life for their children, a familiar story told by many which creates the community in which we live our daily lives. So why is this important? Let me share with you some st statistics. I love a good number. Did you know that according to the Australian Government Department of Immigration and Border Protection fact sheets, nearly one in four of Australia's 21 million people were born overseas? The number of settlers arriving in Australia between July 2012 and June 2013 totaled more than 200,000 and they came from over 200 countries. And according to the ABS Census of Population and Housing data, 35% of children in Australia, about 1.5 million, live in migrant families. So what might this look like in a prior to school setting? There is a likelihood that one in four children may not have been born in Australia. Children and families may speak a language for which there is no interpreter. Family practices, cultures may be very different to what you know. The proportion of children who speak English as an additional language may be greater than the number of children who speak English in your setting. The very nature of our settings are reflective of our larger society and our interactions with these families and value of, the, of their culture will also have long-term impacts on our society. In order to begin to build relationships with these families, and I choose the term relationships quite deliberately over partnerships, if we are to work in partnership with families, we must first get to know them, develop trust, move towards understandings that are mutual, then we have a relationship. In my 10 minutes, I wanted to offer you three key points for consideration when we work with and value culturally and linguistically diverse families in our settings. Reflection, action and celebration. Reflection. In our work every day, we are challenged to reflect on our own practices and think about how we ensure and respect diversity, 
promote a multicultural perspective and value the culturally and linguistically diverse families, children and educators in our settings. As stated in the Early Years Learning Framework, Critical reflection involves closely examining all aspects of events and experience from a different perspective. So going back to my opening statements about subconscious judgments that I may make, what does this mean for the manner in which I approach culturally and linguistically diverse families? A mother who chews her food, removes it from her mouth and passes it to her child shares this information with me as she is worried about her child at mealtimes in the centre. My reaction? Do I take time to understand her reasoning? What are the implications of these judgments that I've made? Are they wrapped up in my truths of how I see the world and how it works? I need to take time and consider deeply the importance of understanding myself as I learn to understand and to work with others. What is my cultural heritage? Do I think I have one? Does it reflect the dominant culture of Australia and therefore it's invisible to me? Perhaps this may give me insight into why some of my partnerships work better than others and why some families feel more valued in my setting than others. Sometimes it's hard to consider the perspectives of others if we are second guessing their thoughts, if we choose not to engage with them or have disengaged because it seems too hard not because we haven't tried, but because the responses we receive do not fit our understanding and realities. Action. I use this statement, shift the blame with students in my classes, when the conversations of working with culturally and linguistically diverse families are discussed. I hear students often say, they don't understand me, or they don't want to be involved, or they never take the time and I worry. By placing the blame on the family, these students have disengaged from this dialogue. They have already othered these families, made decisions about ways in which they perceive these families value the prior to school setting. A moment of clarity came for me, what now is many years ago, when I was involved in a research project speaking with families and schools about culturally and linguistically diverse family engagement. A Vietnamese father agreed to be interviewed and took time out of his demanding work schedule to meet with us at the school and share through an interpreter. A surprise to the principal who had proclaimed that this father had never set foot on the school grounds before. We had finished all the questions required for the study and we were just generally chatting and I asked him what, what made him decide to be interviewed and his reply, you told me in the letter why it was important to me and my child. A simple statement, but that explanation made me rethink every interaction, every piece of information I write, have translated or interpreted. When we shift the focus, shift the blame, a change in words to I don't understand them, I take responsibility, a change in mindset begins and I, look, I begin to look for solutions. Students' faces light up and they become creative keen for a prac to try and work out new ideas. Oh yes, I can communicate with them, I have an app. Did you know Google Translate will? Maybe there's another parent who also speaks the language. Let's ask the key words and set up a translation interpreting co um, committee. Bicultural support can assist. A part of valuing families includes connecting families and creating communities, building social capital, decreasing social isolation and dispelling cultural myths that may exist amongst families, valuing and sharing heritage, inviting further conversation if, for example, stereotypes about cultural groups are raised, challenging othering that occurs in our settings, having the difficult conversations. Why don't particular families attend our events? Consider the community we want our setting to be. Respectful of diversity, valuing and engaging families. Celebrate. Celebrate taking time to reflect on your own practice and working out how to address concerns. Talk to colleagues, follow up with readings, speak with families you perhaps have not connected meaningfully with. Be challenged to ask questions about culture and share different ways of being. Celebrate connecting families to each other, ensuring a sense of belonging and value in your setting. 
Share with other educators in your setting your thoughts and ideas. Celebrate small steps. So now we have come full circle. When I first started putting this presentation together, I thought about the collective, that we, us, as staff teams, need to consider how we value culturally and linguistically diverse families in our prior to school settings. Then I realised that wasn't quite correct. In order to affect change, my focus needs to be me. Critical self-reflection impacts change. Awareness informs action. My action. I can make the difference. Thank you.